This production is being brought to you by Battery Outfitters with locations all over the Mid-South. They are your neighborhood battery store. In today's video, I'm essentially making the fisherman's version of lemonade out of lemons. If you're like me and you do a lot of catfishing, I'm sure at some point you find yourself catching gar. And probably you get aggravated about those gar from time to time. And possibly you've even done You've made the mistake, I should say, of throwing those gar up on the bank or in some way killing them or essentially wasting the resource. Maybe not all to your own fault though. Maybe you've been misinformed about gar. Maybe you didn't know how to clean them. Maybe you've uh, heard the myth that they're poisonous. Uh, maybe you've heard that they're bony. But I'm about to show you that they are actually uh, great producers of large amounts of boneless meat that is white and, and odorless and really good tasting meat. Let's get this going. So you're out fishing, you've caught a gar, and let's just assume that that gar is somewhere between two and five feet. Anywhere in there is the perfect range to do what I'm about to show you. The tools that you're going to need, step number one, ideally you should have a leather glove to help you handle the, the gar so that you don't get cut up. But if you don't have that, a nice towel will do that for you. You've reeled that gar in, he's at the side of your boat, or you've, you've drug him up on the bank and now you've got to handle him. First thing you should know, obviously the teeth will cut you, but additionally the scales will cut you. So to handle him, you need that rag or that, that leather glove. In this case, we got this big monster here. It's a pretty good sized gar. Up to the side of the boat, uh, James reeled it in for me, and I just took this rag and I just quickly went around his snout just like that. Just put your monkey grip on him. No matter what he does, don't let go. He can't hurt you as long as you got a good rag around him or a leather glove on and you keep it away from your body. The next tool that you need is a good hammer. So if you're in the habit of catching gar every time you go fishing, you need your leather glove, you need your hammer, you need some knives and some snips. So we've got him contained. We want to dispatch him with our hammer. As you can see, I've already done that to this fish. I assume you can see that. So this fish is dead and it's ready to be cleaned. That brings me to probably one of the most important steps. You cannot let your gar get warm. You need to kill them as soon as they come out of the water. You need to be cleaning them within minutes. And that all comes down to the gar actually being uh, odorless and, and mild and just a delicious fish to eat. You let him sit there on the bank until you get ready to go home, of course it's not going to taste good. Get that gar out of the water, get it killed, get it cleaned, get it on ice, take it home and enjoy it. Here we go. First step, you're going to want to take a pretty robust knife and you're going to want to establish uh, a hole, you know, maybe at the front and somewhere toward the back so that you can use your tin snips to remove the armor. In this case, I'm going to start here at the front and kind of low on the fish just to work my way under the armor so that I can begin making my cuts. You do want to be careful when you push the knife in through the armor, don't push it into the gut pocket. There's no reason in the process of cleaning this fish for us to get into his guts. Again, that's going to yield the best tasting fish. If you've ever heard that gar are poisonous, that's not true. However, the eggs will make you sick. So there's another reason to stay out of the gut pocket. I promise that if you guys will follow the steps in this video, you will find that when you choose to put the time in, gar are actually a pretty awesome resource. You know, you've been out fishing, maybe you didn't get the catfish that you want, so you got nothing to take home. But I bet you could get a gar, and I bet your family will like it. So essentially I started a hole on one side and I want to cut from one side along uh, by the pectoral fin to the other side and then I want to make a cut along the top of the body right down the center all the way to this fin at the top rear part of the body and then I'm going to cut down both sides just like I did in the front and we're going to open this armor up kind of like the top of the space shuttle. Another option, by the way, in addition to making that cut the length of this body al along the top, you can actually go ahead and cut kind of along the uh, 
not the belly, but the lower part of the sides from front to back also. I'm doing on that on this guard because, you know, it's pretty good size and the armor's pretty robust. And it might make this process a little easier. It's probably more worth mentioning, by the way, that we have caught, uh, what, four, five blue cats this morning? We've caught five blue cats this morning. Great looking fish. We haven't kept a single one. And here we are cleaning a gar. Now that's not to say that gar is better than blue cat. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying gar are good enough that uh, we enjoy eating them from time to time. And I wanted to do this video, man. I mean, a lot of people don't realize just how good gar can be. Or they don't realize how to uh, access the meat. So hopefully this helps you. I've heard a lot of people over the years complain about how bad a gar smells. Well, in my experience, the outside of all fish doesn't smell very pleasant. But just like every other fish, if you keep that meat cold, you know, kill him while he's fresh, clean it while it's fresh, once you get inside there, you've got some really nice odorless meat. In this case, it's actually worked out to be just as easy to cut the top as it was the bottom. I have seen gar that the along the, the body of the side of the fish was more tender and it was easier to make that cut. But this one, the top's cutting pretty good. It's just kind of a surprise because, you know, it's a bigger fish. But we're almost done cutting this armor. All right, going back to skinning the armor right off of here. As you can see, I've worked my way through the majority of the armor on this side of the fish relatively quick and now it's easy really the hardest part about working this armor off after you do the initial cut is just kind of getting past the the curvature of the armature of the armor and, and holding the fish you know so you can make your cuts but you, you know once I got it going look how easy that was this is some tough tough stuff and this is what will stop most people from cleaning this these fish but just wait till you see how much boneless meat we have when I'm done. All right, I got both sides off now, and I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Quebec Song, hope I'm pronouncing that right, out of Missouri, who made that awesome knife sheath. If you guys are into that kind of thing, or you know somebody that could make you a sheath, get you a big old gar and give it a try. Now for the fun and easy part, getting all this boneless meat off of the body. This part is basically like any other fish. Only in this case, there's a rib cage that runs almost the whole length of the fish. I mean, it's, it's all the way back to here. I don't know if you can see this sort of connective tissue right here, but it's somewhat separated. I haven't even put my knife in here yet. It's somewhat separated from the muscle or the tenderloin that we're after, and that's what we want to start working our knife beside. Until you feel the, the tissue above the rib cage and then down to the rib cage. Again, this part is very easy, very rewarding. It makes all the work that we just put in to getting that armor off very much worth it. As you start removing this meat from the body, if you've done your job and you didn't let the fish get hot and you really got after it and got your job done, you may notice that this meat is, is a lot more tender and it almost seems to melt as you're handling it. It's gonna be a lot different than what you might be used to. Don't let that throw you off. That just means you did your job and you didn't give this fish time to get tough. Again, when we get down to the ribs, we're done. We don't wanna get into the, into the entrails. Get down to the ribs, just start sliding that knife right off the side. 
Look how easy that was. Absolutely massive. This is probably, I'm gonna say six pounds of boneless meat. Let me give it a quick rinse. One thing about this meat, you'll notice right now, this looks somewhat normal. I mean, it needs a salt water rinse, some ice, some water, uh, about 30 minutes worth of salt water rinse, and it'll whiten up even more. But I want to let you know that this is the inside, the side toward the bones, and if I flip this over and show you the skin side, it won't look nearly as appealing, but don't let that throw you off. Think of that just as a, uh, a shadow of the colors from the skin. There's some red meat here, and just some different coloring from the skin, but you're gonna shave a lot of that off at home. And when you're done, you're gonna have a huge piece of boneless, white, mild meat. Before you cook it, cut it into, I would recommend, chicken nugget sized pieces. If you leave it too big, it's gonna be rubbery. It's not gonna be what you're going for. I also haven't had great luck grilling this fish, but I would like to know if you guys do. I mean, maybe I grilled it wrong. My best luck has been from frying it. But if you grill it and it comes out great, let me know in the comments. Additionally, um, if you have tips on uh, cleaning them that you think would make this even better, let me know. None of the sarcastic crap. I don't need to know that you think they're crap fish and you throw them on the bank. I want to hear from the people who are open-minded, willing to try it, and take advantage of one of America's most plentiful resources in almost every body of water. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.